Hello everyone. Let's begin with our today's topic that is averages. So what is average? The average of a number is a measure of a central tendency of a set of numbers. Or in other words, can I say that it's an estimate of where the center point of a set of number lies. So it's basically what the estimate of where the center point of a set of number lies. Now what is going to be the basic formula for averages if there are n numbers and let's suppose the numbers are I'm sorry let's suppose the numbers are x1 x2 till xn suppose these are the numbers which are given and the total numbers are n numbers so what is going to be the average of these n numbers the average is going to be the summation of all these numbers divided by the total numbers all right so the summation and then it's divisible by what it's actually divided by the total number now let me take an example and try to make you people understand this better suppose i have three numbers and those numbers are 5 10 and 15 and i want to find out the average of these numbers so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add all these three numbers and divided it by 3 why 3 because the numbers are 3 in number 1 2 and 3 so if i'm going to add it's going to be 5 plus 10 plus 15 divided by 3 and this is going to be 20 plus 10 30 by 3 so the average is going to be 10 so 10 is what the average of a number Now in later slides you people will get to know that what are the properties of arithmetic mean why the help of an example so just wait till that slide because it's a very very interesting one okay let's move forward now let's discuss that what actually is weighted average so what's weighted average what's the concept of it now when we have two or more groups whose individual averages are known So as to find out the combined averages of all the elements of all the groups which we have we use what we use the concept of weighted average thus suppose if we have k groups with the averages of so we have k groups with the averages of a1 a2 till ak and they have these elements present in them so the first group that is a1 group has n1 number of elements the second group has n2 number of elements and so on the kth group has kn number of elements then what is going to be the weighted average the weighted average is going to be the given by formula this all right so these are the averages a1 is a group whose average is a1 okay or if i do not want to confuse you people so let's suppose that it's group 1 and the average is a1 and it's group 2 then the average is a2 it's group k then the average is ak and they have these elements n1 elements n2 elements and n k elements so what is going to be the weighted average the weighted average is going to be number of elements multiplied by their averages summation upon the total number of elements of all the groups which are present there and this is what this is the concept of weighted average let's repeat what is the concept of weighted average weighted average concept is used to find the combined average of all the elements of all the groups which are given all right and this is how we have explained it so let's move forward now we have the concept of arithmetic mean now a few minutes earlier itself i told you that i have a very interesting question for you people it's a very simple question yet you have to think out of the box now you have to find the average of four numbers and those four numbers are provided to you the numbers are 12 13 17 and 18 so these are the numbers which are given to you so let's find the average of these numbers now you people will think that what is that much difficult in this question it's very very simple you just have to add and divide it by 4 that is also what is going to be the answer so if i add them all it's going to be simple it's going to be 60 by 4 that is 15 okay this means what 
This means that if each of the four numbers of the set was replaced by 15 each, there would be what? There would be no change in the total amount. Correct? This is an important way to look at averages. In fact, whenever you come across any situation where the average of a group of n numbers is given, you should visualize that there are n numbers, each of whose values is the average of the group. Now, the importance is in the visualization itself. What I'm trying to say is that if I'm going to add 3 in 12, I'll get what? I'll get 15. If I'm going to add 2 in 13, I'm going to get what? 15. If I'm going to subtract 2 from 17, I get what? 15. And again, if I'm going to subtract 3 from 18, I will get what? 15. Now here the important thing is that addition of all this is 60. Addition of all this is 60. And addition of all this is 0. That means what? That implies that if I am going to convert all these numbers to the average number, of the group which is given then the total amount the summation is going to remain what the summation is always going to remain constant so it's 60 here and 60 here and the amount by which i added or subtracted the numbers which were given in order to convert all these numbers to their averages the summation of that amount was what zero the summation was what zero so let's take another example and wrap this topic up. Now a grocer has a sale of rupees 6,435, 6,927, 6,855, 7,230 and 6,562 for 5 consecutive months. So this is what? This is the sale of a grocer for 5 consecutive months. Suppose it's for... It's for January, for Feb, for March, April and May. Okay. Now, how much sale must he has in the six months so that he gets an average sale of this? Now, I am given the average sale. Can I find the sale for the six month? Of course, I can do that. So, what is the total sale for five months? If I'm going to add 6, 4, 3, 5, 6, 9, 2, 7, 6855, 7230 and 6562. Then addition of all this is going to be 34,009. Okay, so this is nothing but this is the addition of all the sales which that particular grocer made in 5 consecutive months. Alright, now what is the required sale? The required sale is 6500 into 6. Subtracting 334,009. Why? Because this is the average sale which I am having. So in the previous slide itself, I told you that if we are going to convert all the numbers of a particular set into its average, then the total is going to remain what? Constant. And this is for 6 months and this is for 5 months. So if I am going to subtract this, can I obtain the value for the 6th month? Of course. And it's going to be 4,991. Now remember what this concept basically says. I'm going to repeat that and then we'll wrap it up. Okay. Now in my previous slide, I told you people. Okay, let me put on with my previous slide here. Oh my God, it's it just went away. Okay, never mind. So in that particular slide, I told you people that if you are going to add a certain amount of numbers, Suppose in the previous slide, I told you if you are going to add 3 to 12, it's going to be 15. If you are going to add 2 to 13, it's going to be 15. And if you are going to add negative of 2 in 17, it's going to be 15. If you are going to add negative of 3 to 18, it's going to be what? 15. And the addition of all these numbers is going to be 60. Whereas addition of all these numbers is going to be 60. And addition of all these numbers is going to be what? 0. Okay, and I told you that you can visualize this in a format that you are converting all these numbers into their averages because at the end of the day, the submission is the same. It's 60 and 60. So there is no change. This is exactly the concept which I'm utilizing in solving this question. What I am doing is I know the average. So if I know the average and I add this average six times, 
so i will get the end you know the total amount of sales which that grocer has for six consecutive months and if i subtract sales for five consecutive months from the sales of six consecutive months i'll get the sales of the sixth month there and that is exactly what i did all right so i hope you people understood the concept just go and study and all the best